ano ay mikia loha kako um o vauno o kanani atan um ke ke kia ka ohana atan ame ka ohana ka ho iwai o robert ame joyce ku mau makua mai wahewa mai au no ho awi hilo um my name is kanani atan and I'm the child of the Atan and the Kaho'iwai lineage. Um, I come from Wahewa on the island of O'ahu. And my parents are Joyce and Robert Atan. I live now in Hilo on the big island of Hawaii. And um, I, I just love practicing my culture and where I come from. Aloha vale, kala e kaune, ayamalalo. I've had many teachers. Um, one who taught me the practice of hiuvai, or the practice of release um, and cleansing uh, with water. A lot of this training culturally comes also from uh, when I moved to the Big Island and went to college here and was Hanai by Auntie Pele and Uncle James Hanoa in Kau. And um, they took us under their wings, myself and a couple of my friends, and we learned the lifestyles of Kau one of which was how to give offering to the land. And before giving offering, we have to cleanse our hi'uvai. And so I learned the practice of hi'uvai for how to properly approach um, ceremony in a purified state of mind. Another kumu um, of hi'uvai is Kekuhi Keli Kanako Ole O Haidi Lani. Um, a group of us um, practiced ceremonial time together and in preparation. Many of the same things that I learned um, were are gonna be shared today. So the very first time that I was taught Hiwai was on my 21st birthday and um, I was on the island of Kauai for a, um, a Kalahui Hawaii women's retreat. We did a sunrise ceremony and before the sunrise ceremony we hi'uvai before the sun rose and it was right at the beach side of a, a retreat that we were staying at and they told me like just a pareo nothing on underneath you know just a, a sarong a wrap nothing underneath and we'll meet at at the ocean's edge right in front of where we were sleeping we start with setting the intention at the ocean side that we wanted to leave all the things that we didn't need to carry with us um, into the ceremony and and so we walked in we were told to leave our wraps on the beach and go into the ocean much like we returned to a regenerative space like a womb when you come back and emerge back out of the water you're like a new a new person just like how when that sun is rising it's a new day it's to really more fully embrace the um the pure the purified state of mind each and every time i practiced um i did it the very same way as was done um, the very first time i had ever learned um, going into the water, um, thinking about the releasing of the things that I no longer needed to carry or couldn't figure out and needed help with, just releasing it to Kanaloa, to the ocean. And so that was um, several, many years of just that practice. Um, I learned and practiced more hi'uvai with my comrades and my peers as we were practicing, preparing for makahiki. Um, and opening and closing makahiki in different areas on Hawaii Island 
and each opening was we performed the hi before each opening and um, conducted the opening of makahiki time which is a time of the year um, where the seasons change and the practices change really so the practice of hi became like the reading of the textbook of the land the, the the sensing and the awareness the observations unfolding I went to a place called Waianae Comprehensive Center with um, a job that I worked um, at Kamehameha Schools uh, we went to Maili Beach and learned about their protocols around Hi'uvai and one thing that they taught me really stuck because it was like an, a leveling up or almost like a, an evolution of what I had learned with Hi'uvai previously. It was to approach the ocean with a process in the water. You need to at least be able to articulate what's your reason for going into this moment, this Hi'uvai moment is. It might be that, um, you know, I, I'm I can't seem to focus at work because I'm really stressed out or something really intense is happening with my family. I'm, I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Um, gosh, you know, I've had to change so much because of these pandemic times. Um, everything that I used to do is now composting in the past and out of all of that, I've got to regenerate and create a whole new me. You prepare for you to go. You go to your favorite beach or the spot that you know is where you want to be for your hi'uvai. Um, and then you just observe. Watch the ocean conditions. Um, watch for all the, the, the idiosyncrasies and the things that happen. Look for the really beautiful things that just pop out in front of you. Let your senses um, heighten and feel yourself sort of begin to open up to the pre-ceremonial moments because it's there that the teachers are already starting to teach. Before you actually go into your, your place of interaction um, and exchange with the environment, always ask permission because the environment has been existing just fine without you. You know, the environment's doing its thing. It's got its own rhythm. It's, it's, it's existing and thriving, doing its thing. Um, and, and here you are with, with, an, you know, with a need to do this. So announce yourself, announce what your intention is, you know, ask permission to enter. Be still to receive the answer, whether it's a, a soft breeze that blows your way or a certain scent that you smell. Of, of a fern that's growing nearby or um, the sudden appearance of a, of a bird that, you know, or whatever it is, just something that tells you, okay, I, I'm not interrupting what's going on here. It's okay for me to conduct my ceremony. And then you move in. You can put your things down, kind of set up a little spot for you, um, observe the ocean conditions, look at where you're going to enter. And when you see the way to enter is clear, then you go in and you carefully, slowly get ready to go in. Um, right before entering the water, you can call in your ancestors. And the first step is think about everything you're grateful for. Um, and it could be, you know, just grateful for the fact that I have the mobility to be here, the opportunity to independently get up and go and be here, to, to have this body of water to interact with. Once you've thought about everything that you need to think about as far as gratitude, then you take the first dunk of three. You take in a deep breath, you dunk in the water, and you blow all of your breath out. And then when you come up, um, calmly move into the second phase, which is um, to think about forgiveness and about um, burdens and things that you've been carrying that 
you're tired and maybe don't need to be carried anymore. Either they've resolved, it's been resolved, or it's moved on or transitioned, or um, you've struggled enough to the point where you're ready to just say, I I need help carrying this. When you're full of thinking about that concept of forgiveness or those that maybe you need to forgive, take a deep breath and calmly dunk back in the water, immerse yourself in the water, blow out all your breath and come back up. Once you've created that space of forgiveness that was born of that um, intention of gratitude, then you move into a space of inspiration and you ask for inspiration for new ideas, new, new connections, new solutions, new perspectives, um, new pathways, new resources, new relationships, um, new creative sparks and those kinds of things. Then you take another deep breath, the, the last one, and you immerse yourself and blow out all of the air from that breath and come back up. Um, start to close your ceremony again by thanking um, the safety of this ocean and, and this place and um, stepping back and, and safely emerging out of the water onto the shore and um, turning and facing the water and just another statement of thanks thanks to the ancestors who were with you and inspiring and supporting you and, and um, their presence and walk back to your spot um, and and maybe even take a moment of reflection you know and that's that's one of the gifts of water is its ability to offer reflection naturally just perfectly when it's in the right conditions and so if you've created that for yourself in this ceremony then um, the opportunity re to reflect would naturally unfold for you and then when you're ready um, gather up your things make sure you left the place better than when you came just like when you ask permission you announce that you're leaving and um, all that is is there will stay only you will go and you can go to um, shower change clothes whatever you need to do to go about your day saying goodbye to the place um, announcing that you're getting up and getting ready to go um, that's the closing of your ceremony It doesn't have to be ocean if you're not ocean bound, if you don't have access to ocean. Um, you can walk into, you can hit Ufai in many other ways. It's to, to remember that we have a companion. We have a companion in our natural resources, in the natural environment, wherever there is a body of water, um, real or contrived. But if you set the ceremonial mindset of reset, of purification and cleansing and uh, therapeutic interaction with water. So that is for you to explore, you know, to not feel bound by the rituals and the practices of those who are close to the ocean. One of the most helpful um, values that we, we have for the world as Kanaka, Hawaii, as Hawaiian people is aloha. And from that place of, of understanding, of expanded awareness, of deep compassion, it is that expanding understanding and allowing for many definitions to be expressed for such a ceremony as cleansing or purification. And so in some places I've heard kapukai, in other places I've heard hiuvai, and for many it's it's a releasing or a ho'oku'u, and for others 
who don't speak Hawaiian, it might just be a reset, a rejuvenating, a recreating, and a cleansing. And always with aloha. Aohe pauka ike kahalau ho'okahi. One can learn from many sources of knowledge. And when in Waiohinu, you do as the people in Waiohinu do. And when in Waipio, you do as the people in Waipio do. And in places where you're starting to cultivate and develop your own relationship with, let's say, the place that you live now, or your new residence, or your old residence, reaching deeper to understand. It's about more the relationship and the interaction with the resources presenting at the land that you're at and that respect.